Hello, this video is designed to try to help you test your own piano to see if you think there might be some work that would improve it or whether you feel you need to, t to change your piano for one more suitable for study or for just enjoyment. And we're starting off with this Seiler Upright Piano, which is one of our preferred makes of piano, made in 1986. And we've done work on this to try to perfect it. Now, first of all, looking at the touch weight, which is the force needed to, for, to make the key go down. So how heavy is the action? So I've got the pedal, right hand pedal down. You must test it with that. And this is uh, approximately 48 grams, 49 grams, I beg your pardon, just under. That's five one pound coins and the 20 P piece. And if I tap underneath the keyboard, it should go down smoothly. And so that's round about 49 grams or just under. Now if we try two C's above, so let's put the coins on there and let's have a look at this one. And it goes down a bit more easily, slightly lighter. So that's quite correct. Piano should be slightly lighter uh, at that point. And not every piano is the same, so don't worry if your piano is not exactly uh, like, as accurate as this, but um, you can tell whether the piano feels too heavy. And certainly if uh, we needed to put a lot more coins on, this is down near the bass end, and needs to be a little bit heavier, so perhaps we need to add a little bit. So I'm going to add a 5p coin here, that's 3.25 grams, and it should go down reasonably smoothly. So that's a bit heavier in the bass, maybe slightly too heavy, but um, not, to, not that much that you'd notice it too much. But if you feel when you press the keys down, your pen is really heavy, or it's a lot of variety, maybe one key is heavier than another, uh, then that's definitely an issue that is worth trying to correct. This Wellmar Upright, again, one of our preferred makes of piano. Um, it's slightly lighter, as you can see, it's immediately going down and uh, goes down with less persuasion. So maybe that's a couple of grams less, which may be preferable if you're an occasional player and um, don't want to, the action to be too heavy. Here's a reconditioned Yamaha U3 made in 1973 and uh, goes down perhaps slightly easier than the Sider, so maybe one gram difference. So all of these are within acceptable range, really. Here's a new Foyer Cup, right? It's one of our preferred makes again. And uh, again, it goes down perhaps a little bit more persuasion, maybe that's 50 grams. The new pianos tend to be very slightly um, heavier, though it went down more easily there. But Really, it's the right weight. You don't want too light a weight if you're studying the piano. This is a Yamaha G2, which featured on an earlier video, and the piano's been refaced, um, and we have done quite a bit of work on this, but it, as a result of having slightly lighter hammers, then it goes down more easily. So that's a lighter touch. Again, if you're an occasional player, you might prefer that. That's about 43 grams, which is... Um, you could go down to about 40 grams if you're an occasional player and it'll still function well and be easier to play. See, the C above middle C goes down, uh, so that would be probably about 40 grams. Now, this piano is featured on one of the videos because it had a severe problem. A lot of the hammers were very sticky and uh, very, very uneven it was, so we've had to do a lot of work. And because it's got refaced hammers, it's slightly lighter. But it's a wonderful piano, still sounds excellent. So we're still working a little bit to perfect this piano, but it's an excellent instrument. Now the next test is going to be the key dip. That's the distance the key goes down. This is an 11 meter, millimeter key dip measurer. And uh, so if it goes down there, we want to see if it's level. 10.5, 11, possibly 11.5 is acceptable. Uh, it's slightly personal, but 11 millimeters is the one that I would re most regularly set the key dip at. So this is the Seiler uh, set at 11 millimeters. Let's have a look at some other pianos. Now as our Wellmar, that was set at uh, 11.5 roughly, I'd say, and that, that's acceptable. It feels right to play. Now this other Wellmar here has a shallower touch. If we look there, it's probably about 10.5. So that's within the range that we're talking about as well. And, and again, it feels right. It's, it's a slightly different feel if it's slightly less, but it's important that the key dip is enough for the hammer to work properly, as we'll look at in a minute. Now for these tests, you won't need to take the piano apart, though you need to lift the top lid of the piano here. And this is a, one of the Wellmars. And uh, if you want to take the front panel off, you're confident we're doing that, then it does make life slightly easier. But we're going to press the key down and see, as I mentioned, the key dip needs to be sufficient so the hammer can reach the string. Now it would reach the string if we 
altered the set off, but they're basically trying to explain this is that the hammer was to get as close as possible to the string before setting off or coming back. And perhaps in a future video I'll show you what it means to set, to set off. Um, but it needs to get as close to the string as possible and then set off. And then that gives you the best, the most sensitive touch you can get. So within say one or two millimeters, and that one is perfect. Actually this action, uh, upright action model will demonstrate what we mean. So if we press the key down, the hammer, imagine the wooden piece of the string, gets nearly to the string and pulls back. And the set off is this little button here. If I zero in on it, you'll see that that's pulling the hammer away. So as it gets close to the string, the set off operates and pulls the jack out. So the hammer falls back. Let's have a look at that again. There's this little button here that we're talking about. So that can be adjusted with this screw, but I wouldn't recommend trying this. Let a uh, professional technician do it. If you haven't got any technicians nearby, then it's understandable you might try it, but they can easily break these buttons, especially on older pianos. Um, so be extremely careful. And again, a technician will know whether it's likely to be a problem or not. So if we watch this again, as the hammer gets close to the string, then the jack pulls out and that's operated by this little button here. There's a spring to push it back in, as you can see. Uh, that's just uh, hopefully you can understand what's going on there. Now you may have a Celeste felt on your piano and so that's difficult for you to see what's going on, but there are two possibilities here. One is you could try and look around the back of it and then if we press the hammer, you'll see it again, it gets reasonably close to the string. So within two millimeters, if you've got a silent piano, then unfortunately it doesn't get any closer usually than four, so it's not so sensitive. But we want to get two millimeters or even closer. The closer you get, the better, though it must function properly. You don't want to play the hammer and find that it's double hitting or, or not really coming off at all. So uh, the other thing is you could push it down and have a look from the back and see, see it just about touching the Celeste felt. This is a Foric upright piano. And, very kindly they've made it so that the Celeste lifts out very easily. I wouldn't recommend trying to get it out on most other pianos but I'm just going to lift it out and pulling it up now and uh, we will get the Celeste rail off. There we go. So I've taken the Celeste rail out and um, we can see as we press the hammer then it gets within two millimeters of the string would be ideal. As I say don't as close as possible but it must function properly at the same time and then it drops back. There are other regulation items that we could be showing, but I don't want to make the video too long. These are some of the really important ones. Uh, on this piano, let's look at the dampers as well. So um, actually, before we do that, I'll look at a grand piano. This is a restored Bechstein grand piano. So again, as we press the key down without the string, the note sounding, you can see the hammer's getting within about two millimeters again. So it's exactly the same as an upright piano. But you have more control on the Grand because it has a better leverage system. So on the Grand action we have the same idea of the set off button here. Um, as we push it down then that releases the hammer. But we see there's a lever here and that holds the hammer closer to the string and has, it gives you more sensitive control really, especially on repetition. Uh, now again, I can show you on this one that we want to get as close as possible to the string, again, two millimeters will be our ideal, but not so close that it doesn't work. So I'm going to just adjust this so it doesn't work. I'll just take it up a bit and then we'll try the hammer and it just blocks on the string. So that's no good, obviously. There's got to be enough safety margin. So we want to adjust this so that it, just, it works and there's a bit of safety margin as well. So there we go, let's try that. Uh, so that's about right. I'm not going to play around with it any longer, but just to try and give you some idea of what the regulation means. Again, definitely get a, t a technician to do it who's used to doing it, um, unless you ha don't have one for miles around, in which case you may like to try. Of course, working on the grand action means you've got to take the action out, and that's very tricky. Um, the warning of that is not to have the hammers up here when you're doing it, not to touch the keys. Um, so. Really, again, a technician is the best one to do it. I did make a video earlier about um, how to take an action out of a piano, but not to be recommended if you've got a technician, just mention the work that you think might need doing on the Now going back to the Feuerich upright, um, the next thing to look at is, is the damper regulation. I'm putting my foot up and down on the damper pedal, that's the right hand pedal, 
and we can see how far the dampers come out. Whether they all come out, come off together as well, that's really important. Um, now, if your piano, if you're looking at your piano and just thinking it don't come off anything like all together, well, obviously the main thing is that they function, they do pull off, um, and they pull off far enough to actually not just come off the strings, but ideally that they should be slightly further out than this. I would like them to come out to about there. So this pedal needs adjusting slightly um, so that they come out to there. So that over time, they're not going to end up not damping at all properly. So those wedge dampers, it's important that they, they pull right out really. Now the other thing is obviously with the keys, as we press the hammers down, uh, as press the key down again without the, ham the note sounding, you can see where the dampers pull off, and that's relatively late. They should pull off between a third, the hammer that's a third of the way to the string, so it could pull off there, a halfway, and these pull off at two thirds, which is about maximum. I don't really want them to pull off any later, otherwise we've replaced the carto. In fact, in this case, I think we need to do a little bit of regulation so that they pull off slightly, slightly earlier, because when you place the carto, the hammer's sort of, sort of thrown to the string and the damper's not really pulling off properly. So they're a little bit on the late side, need to come off slightly earlier, so that needs to be done. Now that was a new Forex, so we do find sometimes with new pianos we still need to do bits of regulation. This is an older Kawai upright piano, um, made in 1961, good age in terms of tone, but this um, actually needs a bit of regulation. The, hammers are, the dampers are certainly pulling off far enough, so as you can see the, these wedge ones are coming out far enough and they're completely coming away from the string. Slightly different system on here as you can see. Um, but if we look, look at it with, uh, looking at it with the, with the damper pedal, it's about, about correct, pulling them all off together. But looking at it with the, from the key, these ones are too early. Uh, there's one there that's slightly skew as well. So uh, we'll be working on that. It's a five year guarantee on all, the, all these pianos anyway. So I don't think there'll be any problem for at least 10, 15 years, uh, unless it's played extremely heavily. But these dampers are lifting off very early, perhaps a bit earlier than I would like. There's one there that's so early, it's almost lifting off straight away. There's one there that might be lifting off too early. Uh, so there's regulation to do on these. Um, definitely a third is really the minimum. Uh, that hammer moving a third is the way towards the string, minimum. And then half would be normal. That one there's about half, isn't it? Um, and or perhaps a bit, no, it's about a third, isn't it? Um, and then they need to be coming off later, mostly on this one. It's exactly the same on the grand. So on this blue to the grand piano, we can see they're lifting off just after a third, so almost a halfway to the string, um, which is correct. And I'm pushing two at once to see if they lift off at the same time. And one of them's lifting off slightly earlier than the other, so that's just very fine regulation. You wouldn't pick that up in the touch, I don't think. Here's the back slime we looked at earlier, and um, again, about a third, maybe it's a bit early. If the dampers come off earlier, obviously it feels heavier because you can feel the weight of the damper, though once the hammer's overcome the initial inertia, then uh, you wouldn't notice it quite so much. But certainly if you make the dampers come off later, it lightens the touch. Now an important test I perhaps should have put in earlier is that if there's any lost motion, then that will definitely affect the touch. So. Um, I can feel this key going down with nothing happening. Uh, if we put the coins on top of it, then we'll see this one isn't going down at all. This is with 43.5 grams. So, and this one is going down immediately slightly, if you can see there. So that's got lost motion. And uh, to be able to see what's happening, you'd have to take the front panel off. But if you can feel there's lost motion and that needs regulating, it will make a, a very big difference to how the piano feels when you play it. Now when we take the front off, you can see what's happening with lost motion. So this one responds immediately. If we look at the hammer, lifting off immediately. And this one is lost motion. If you look at this bottom part of the action here, it's moving before the top part does anything. On C, it's fine. And on D, it's lost motion. And that's really noticeable. Uh, if you take up the lost motion, which you do by turning this capstan here, this is wooden capstan, this is an older chapel, 1920s. Uh, you usually have brass ones in younger pianos. And you'll see that you can turn this capstan and it takes up the lost motion. Again, if you have a wooden capstan, they very, very, very easily break. Uh, so very important to get a technician to do this. And if you haven't got a technician around, then it's best to just 
to gently ease it off first and uh, really carefully. Um, you should be able to insert something in these holes to turn it, capstan adjuster. But as I say, the wood breaks so easily that um, you might want to get hold of it with a pair of pliers instead. Um, and then very gingerly, they very easily break, so be very careful with that. So now we've looked at the touch of the piano, let's uh, focus a bit on the tone. This is one of the Wellmars, and it's quite mellow sounding. Wellmars tend to be mellow, but mellowness might also be to do with the hammers. Uh, th this is not a new piano, so they see slight string indentation, so they're a little bit mellower than they would have been when they were new, but not very much. The, uh, Wellmars are naturally mellow pianos anyway. I talked a lot about tone on other videos, so you could perhaps look at some of them, but uh, this one, this is a knight. Again, slightly indented hammers, so slightly softer than it would have been originally. Uh, but uh, that's preferable for a lot of people who want a softer tone. And a very beautiful sounding piano. Knights are very well made pianos. Of course, we're very selective as to which ones we get. We don't want them to be too worn. And the strings, I talked about break points before, but I think this video is probably long enough already, but in terms of tone, you can alter the tone by uh, refacing hammers. Uh, you can make the tone brighter. That's normally what you do. If the hammers are very, very flat, then obviously the tone is going to be very dull. It won't bring out the harmonics properly because they're too flat. So that's, that's something that is important to consider. And then last of all, the tuning. Obviously, I've changed, chosen this piano deliberately because it's got a problem and uh, we need to replace the rest plank behind the tuning pins here. There's a video of this one too. And if the tuning is very badly out like that, it means the tuning pins are slipping. So if you play through your piano and that's relatively, well, it needs tuning, but it isn't a disaster, whereas that one is, one of those tuning pins is loose. And that one too. For all of those, so this really has problems and it's not just the question of putting bigger tuning pins in. In this case, it's a model uh, five Becksteins commonly. We've done several of these where the rest plank behind here has gone. That doesn't happen on most pianos, by the way, so don't get too worried. As long as your humidity is reasonably high in the room you're in, you won't have a problem. But even with that, you can, this dries out so easily. Another one there, you see. So we're gonna to have to replace the rest plank. It's, n it's not good enough to replace the tuning pins we found from experience. But, but the, the tone of the piano, this is a good toning, toned piano. It's also got some bass strings broken. So that's uh, quite a lot of work. We, obviously when we replace the rest plank, we do replace the strings anyway. And the result's beautiful on the Model 5. Beckstein's a beautiful piano. So that's a quick, introduction which I hope has helped you to think about your own piano, how to test your own piano. As I mentioned before, it's best to get a technician in to, to do the work, but it might help you to know if, for instance, the touch is not right, the, you find that the weighting is varying or too heavy, too light maybe. If you want to study seriously, then it might be a bit light for you. And regulation, if you find that you press the key down and there's a little bit of slack in the key. Um, you could check by looking inside if, you are not, if you're okay about taking the front panel off, then that would be very useful. And just to see uh, whether you feel your piano needs work. The tone of the piano, we didn't look too much at, on this video, the tone of the piano, but does it sound full and, and rich throughout? Obviously, in the end of the day, although touch is important if you're practicing, it's the sound you're making. It's what sound comes out of the piano that really counts. And this Wellmar is a very mellow sounding piano. If you play jazz, you want, might, have, might want a brighter sound, but I think it's a very good all-round piano. And sings in the mid treble. It's the most important thing that it sings just here. And that the tenor, Alls is nice and rich. And that the piano stays in tune, as we mentioned on the, the last point there. Obviously that's very important, the tuning pins are tight. And, and a good maker piano, they tend to stay in tune better. Thank you very much for listening.